Hello and welcome to another NetAdmin video. Today we're going to talk about CloudPath on-premise installation. So with CloudPath you got two options. You either have cloud or on-premise and the on-premise version can be loaded inside of KVM, VMware, or Hyper-V. Today we're going to focus on VMware because that's what I have in my lab environment. So once you either purchase CloudPath or you get your trial, um, you'll receive an activation code and inside the email from CloudPath support and inside the email you'll have your administrator account which is how you'll log in to activate your product and log into the product from this point on and you'll also have the links to download your OVA file or the different files for whatever hypervisor you're using and there's also a link in here to a deployment guide if you want to check that out it's a really good guide walks you step by step through a lot of the processes that we're going to talk about so it's a good reference for later on all right so if you want to get a cloud path trial um, you can send an email here with this following information to find whether you want an on-premise or cloud um, some notes down here at the bottom that it is a 90-day trial and there is no warning when it expires so make sure you keep up with that All right, so a couple of things that we need to talk about before we do the install. So the CloudPath instance inside of your virtual environment will need to have access to a couple sites externally um, via 80 and 443. So it'll be xpc.cloudpath.net and dist2.cloudpath.net, and that's for licensing and updates and things like that. Um, unless you have an internal NTP server, it's going to need access to an external NTP server via UDP 123. Um, so by default, we use pool.ntp.org, so you'll need to have access, uh, allow access to that through your firewall. So internally, if by any chance you have any firewalls or rules set up in place, CloudPath will need to have access to Active Directory. It'll need to have access to your wireless LAN controller, and depending on whether you're going to use CloudPath and its full features of being a radius server and a certificate authority, if you have an external radius server that you'd rather use or you have an external certificate authority that you're going to use, it would need access to those as well. All right, so to do this install, you're going to need the OVA file that you'll download from the link in the email. You're going to need access to your environment, and in this case, VMware. Um, you're going to need a fully qualified domain name for this product. Um, you're going to need a service account. Um, you're going to need IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and DNS unless you're using DHCP. And then you have the option to set up a list of IP addresses to restrict administrative access to this, to this appliance. So if you want to do that, you can. All right, so and after you get done with the installation, you're going to need to access it through a web browser to activate it and from that point on to administer it. And here are your supported web browsers. Um, Internet Explorer is the full-blown Internet Explorer, not Microsoft Edge and Windows 10, so be, be mindful of that. Okay, so we're, we're in our virtual environment now, and you have two ways to access um, your VMware virtual environment. You can either do it through the web client or you can do it through the traditional vSphere client, which I call the thick client. Um, I'm kind of old school, so I like the thick client better than I do the web client. There are some things you can't do in the thick client that you can do in the web client, but that for this part of the installation, they both work pretty much the same. Um, you s select your host that you want to deploy the OVF template to. So inside of the web client, you would go to host and clusters, select your host. You would right click on it and select deploy OVF template. Um, here in the thick client, we're going to select our host and we're going to go to file and we're going to go to deploy OVF template. So now I need to go in here and I need to choose my file that I'm going to actually install, my OVA file that I downloaded here on my local machine. And we're going to click next. This is a general summary of what's going on. I have to accept my end user license agreement. And then we're going to click next. And here's where we're going to name this for our environment. And this is local to VMware only. So here you have some options of what type of setup you want to do. And these setups de determine the amount of RAM and the CPU that you're going to use inside of your virtual environment. Um, you can 
give them more if you want to but this these are the recommended settings so I'm going to do a non-production proof of concept since this is a lab and a training video um, you have other options so if you have 4,000 or less users that you're licensed in here you can do 8 gig of RAM uh, two CPUs with two cores if you go with 8,000 or more you can see it keeps increasing so just be mindful of the of the amount of resources that you'll need depending on the size of deployment that you're going to do this is only for non-production if you're actually putting this into real life production you need to choose the 4,000 or less users all right we're going to pick our storage and you can thick or thin provision it. I'm just going to leave it thick since this is a lab. Um, you choose your, your network that you want to go to. And then I have a specific one for my wireless, so I want to choose it. And then here's where we put in the information that we talked about a minute ago. It's our fully qualified domain name. So in this fully qualified domain name, you need to have a real domain name so it if you have a dot local set up in your active directory or set up as your local domain cloud path it will work but you're going to have issues and there are devices especially apple devices that do not trust the dot local so they're not going to authenticate themselves with cloud path they're, they're going to reject the certificate so it, it's a it's a really good idea it doesn't cost very much money most enterprises and most um, entities in the business world have their own domain so this shouldn't be an issue but I just want to put that out there that a dot local can and will cause you issues inside of a deployment in a production environment and even in a lab environment for testing so we put our IP address our net mask our default gateway our DNS server and then I'm gonna leave the ntp.org here um, for enabling HTTPS so in a production environment you're going to leave this you're going to actually want to install a certificate that that you have for your domain name um, I'm going to actually uncheck this since I'm in a lab environment and I do not have the certificate to load um, you'll want to set your time zone and you'll want to set it for where you are that way your time syncs with all your other devices in the network there's way too many choices in here all right so for SSH access you can so we set it to our default port is 8022 if you don't want that you want to set it back to the normal port 22 you can do that as well um, here's where you can put in those IP addresses to restrict admin access and then we have to put in our credentials for our um, console and SSH access So here's a summary of all the information that we just put in. I want to go ahead and power on my, my virtual machine after it's deployed. And we're ready to go. This will take just a minute, and then we'll come back when it's ready. All right. It's almost done deploying. And now we have our virtual machine created. It has powered itself on. So we're going to go ahead and open the console so we can watch this go through the process. So it's going to boot up. And then it's going to take the information that we put in in the form, the fully qualified domain name, the network settings, and the credentials, and it's going to actually apply them to the device automatically for us. As you'll see, it'll go through here and it'll validate each of the different settings. And then once it gets through deploying all of these settings, it will reboot itself. And then it takes about three to five minutes for the virtual machine to come up and get all of the services running and you know get itself stabilized out um, so you don't reboot this very often so the, the time frame is not that big of a deal but on this initial deployment I just want, want you to be aware that it does take a, a few minutes for it to come up and get stabilized before we can actually access it through the web browser to get into it so we'll come back in just a moment and We'll go in and do the final part of the activation. All right, so our virtual machine is up and running. Um, everything's great, so we're going to go ahead and open up a web browser. 
and we're going to go to the fully qualified domain name that we put in here. And it's going to redirect us. And so in, in 5.1 of the OVA, th there's a glitch. Somebody fat fingered a, a part here. So where it comes up is enroll slash start. If you change that to admin, it'll actually come up where it's supposed to. That's actually getting fixed in the next, next version of the OVA file that's coming out, but I just want everybody to know that so nobody gets stuck and nobody's upset and calling support. Um, so we're going to take our activation code that we have that we received in the email, and we're going to activate, and then it gives me my admin credentials in here, and so now I need to go ahead and put me a password in here. This password we're creating here is different than the ones that we that we set for the console and SSH access. This will actually be the username and password that we will use to get in through the web browser to do our administration of CloudPath from this point going forward. All right, and now I'm in. So my device is set up and running and it is activated. So now you have some options. You can either set this up as a server, so it's just the first one, it's standalone. Um, it can be an add-on to a cluster, or it can replace an existing server. So this is brand new for us, so we're going to do a standard server default. Here's my information for my company that I can put all in here. We'll go ahead and just fill this out. Once we get in some basic information that we have, go ahead and click next. And obviously I missed something. Oh, my city. And it wants an IT email. Alright, go ahead and make something up for it. So we'll be happy. All right, so here's our system set up. It's showing us the fully qualified domain name that we put in earlier. Make sure the validation that it's right. And take the, the colon 80 off of it. I don't need that on there. So now we're actually going through and it's doing the final information gathering of the information that we just put in. Um, it restarted the services. It did not restart the entire virtual machine. So now you can have some basic workflow setups. So you can either have a BYOD user and an SMS guest based SMS based guest user setup. So it's actually going to create you a split with these two fundamental setups. You can do it as a BYOD only, or you can just start from blank. So start from blank is pretty obvious and since we'll see this one encapsulated with this one, I'm going to go ahead and pick this one and show you what this will give you so you'll be ready when you actually do your own implementation. Um, so it asks us for secure SSID, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave it leave it as CloudPath test for right now, but this would actually be what you would put in as your secure SSID that you have in your wireless network. All right, so right here we actually can we actually join it to Active Directory. We can join to an LDAP server. We can connect to an external radius. We can connect to an external SAML, or we can use the onboard database for information. So I'm going to go ahead and do connect to my Active Directory. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the default domain.
the only thing you need and you need to actually put this in in this format Notice how you have to put the LDAP, and if you have secure, it's LDAP S. And then our Active Directory DN. All right, so once our Active Directory kicks in, then we'll be here to our sign-in. So these are credentials that we just set up when we're doing activation. All right, and so now we have actually completed the, the initial setup of CloudPath. So under your configuration, your workflow this is where it actually set us up is our visitor SMS base so they're gonna get provide you a phone number and you're gonna provide them a voucher code to get on and then employees for BYOD these are the things that we set up so notice right here cloud path test was the secure SSID that we set up um, under our authentication servers we have the information that we put in here. Under the radius server, this is our radius server that is up and running. So now we have completed the actual installation of CloudPass. So from this point forward, you're building workflows and you're setting up device configurations for your SSIDs and your wired LANs and building policy. So check out some more videos later. And um, I hope this has been really helpful and thank you very much.